Hello and welcome to Rapid TV News. My name is Cynthia Agbo. First, the headlines. CBN orders banks to collect old 500 1,000 Naira notes. INEC presents certificates of return to reps members elect. Aviation fuel heats 840 Naira per litre. Airlines predict flight delays. Zimbabwe court blocks release of electronic voters' role. Flying Eagles coach to submit provisional list of under-20 World Cup. Details of these and more will come to you in the bulletin. In commemoration of the International Women's Day, IWD, observed today across the world, President Mohamed Buhari has joined Nigerian women in celebrating and recognizing the invaluable role women have played in advancing the progress of the country since independence. President Buhari also commended the hard work and dedication of Nigerian women working tirelessly and achieving results in different fields of endeavor, from those sacrificing daily markets and farms to train the next generation of leaders to those breaking limits in education, sports, medical field, art, entertainment, and politics, where they are still largely underrepresented. He said he is proud to have worked and associated with some of Nigeria's brightest women in his cabinet, government and the international community. Still on the International Women's Day, today marks the World International Women's Day with a focal point on the women's rights movement, bringing attention to issues such as gender equality, violence and abuse against women. Our correspondent Irene Okechiko has this report. Today marks the World International Women's Day with a focal point on the women's rights movement, bringing attention to issues such as gender equality, violence and abuse against women. However, this year's International Women's Day with the theme Digital for All is a day set to recognize women who have contributed countlessly to the digital world that we live in. Women are, are highly resourceful, women are highly dependable, women are highly committed to whatever cause they embark on. With the subject Innovation and Technology for Gender Equality honors and celebrates the women and girls who are leading the charge for development of transformational technology and digital education. In addition to highlighting the significance of safeguarding the rights of women and girls in digital environments and tackling online and ICT facilitated gender-based violence. If you don't have women telling their own stories, if you don't have gender responsive budgeting, if you don't have gender responsive project implementation, then issues of women and nationhood will always be swept under the carpet. The observance will investigate how the growing economic and social inequities caused by the digital gender gap. Currently, a persistent gender gap in internet access prevents women from fully utilizing technology. Participation in tech design and governance is still significant, hampered by underrepresentation in STEM education and jobs. However, they are all too frequently forced out of digital places they do occupy due to the persistent fear of gender-based violence online and lack of legal remedy. We're enough. We're like a full circle. We create, we nurture, we transform, and you're just enough. Digital technology is also creating new opportunities for women, girls, and other underprivileged groups to become more powerful globally. The digital age offers a previously unheard of chance to end all types of injustice and imbalance, from tech-facilitated sexual and reproductive healthcare to gender-responsive digital schooling. Reporting for Rapid TV Network, Irene Okechukwu. President Mohamedou Buhari has called on Nigerians living in Qatar to support Nigeria's president-elect Bola Tinubu as he takes over the reins of government on May 29. Speaking at a town hall meeting in Doha as part of his visit to the state of Qatar, 
President Buhari said his administration is set to in place credible, transparent and fair elections which will conclude on Saturday, March 11 with the governorship and state assembly elections. Speaking further, the president acknowledged the noble roles that Nigerians in diaspora have been playing in the development of Nigeria adding that this administration had approved a national diaspora policy and supported the Nigerians in the diaspora commission. Also, meanwhile, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, appeared at the Court of Appeal in Abuja today, Wednesday, over his party's legal quest to inspect by model voter accreditation system BVAS machines and other electoral materials deployed by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in the February 25th presidential and National Assembly elections. The former governor of Anambra State said he remained committed and will give more attention to his mission to retrieve his mandate. Counsel for Mr. Peter Obi Oyechi Ikpeozu said the essence of the application was to enable them to extract data embedded in the beavers, which represented the actual results from the polling units. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, on Wednesday issued certificates of return to winners of the February 25, 2023 House of Representatives election in Nigeria. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, presented the certificates to the members-elect at the National Coalition Center in Abuja. He had, on Saturday, said winners were declared for 423 legislative seats, indicating that supplementary elections will be conducted in 46 other constituencies. He said in the House of Representatives, 325 out of 360 seats have been won by eight political parties. In terms of party representation, the ANEC boss said African Democratic Party won two, All Progressives Congress won 162, All Progressive Grand Alliance four, Labour Party 34, New Nigeria's People's Party 18, People's Democratic Party 102, Social Democratic Party 2, and Young Progressive Party 1. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has ordered commercial banks to collect old 500 and 1,000 hour notes from customers. It said the old notes are legal tender following the directive of the Supreme Court. CBN spokesman Isa Abdumumnin said banks have begun to issue old and new notes to customers at their various automated teller machines terminal and over the counter. He said, though, the CBN was yet to issue an official statement on the matter Nigerians can spend and collect old and new notes in line with the Apex Court ruling, adding that the CBN was concerned over continued rejection of the old notes by some traders and transporters. The CBN spokesman said the old notes should not be rejected as they are still a valid means of exchange. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has confirmed the arrest of no fewer than 793 suspects last year for possession of illicit drugs in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The commander of the NDLEA in FCT, Kabiru Sukawa, while addressing the press during a grassroots sensitization and awareness campaign on the dangers of illicit drugs, also confirmed the seizure of 13,125 kilograms of illicit drugs in the country's capital. Sukawa, during the sensitization, noted that the records of seizures, arrests, and convictions were impressive. You're watching Rapid TV News. We'll go on a short break still to come. Aviation fuel hits 840 Naira per liter. Airlines predict flight delays. And for instance, Zimbabwe court blocks release of electronic voters' role. And in sports, Flying Eagles coach to submit provisional list of under 20 World Cups. Stand by for these and more after the break. Welcome back. Local airlines under the urges of airline operators of Nigeria have disclosed that aviation fuel, popularly known as Jet A1, has become scarce. A situation, according to them, may lead to flight delays. 
an impeccable source within the domestic airlines said the price had been fluctuating, describing the market as a deregulated one where prices change. Meanwhile, the Nigerian aviation sector spent $192 billion in 2022 on aviation fuel alone, adding, according to a report by Philips Consulting Limited. It also said that the increased jet fuel price now represented a significant challenge for the airlines in the first six months. And on the foreign scene, a high court in Zimbabwe has blocked the release of electronic voters roll to the public, citing national security concerns that would expose the documents to manipulation. This follows a court case filed by opposition member of parliament, Alan Makam, after the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission refused to give him a copy that he requested in October last year. The member of parliament said the electronic copy was ideal for his scrutiny as the printed version would be inconvenient and too expensive for him. However, the Harare High Court said the voters' role was a sensitive document to be released to the public without addressing security concerns. Zimbabwe is scheduled to hold general elections in July. Madagascar's government says eight people were killed and more than 1,000 homes were destroyed. The storm first wrecked havoc in southeastern Africa in late February, killing 21 people and displacing thousands in both countries. Meteorology say it is rare for a storm to make such a loop. The tropical cyclone is on a track to become the longest lasting storm on record and it continues to gain strength. The cyclone developed off the North Australian coast as early February and then traveled thousands of kilometers across the southern Indian Ocean, affecting Mauritius before making landfalls in Madagascar two weeks later and then Mozambique. Experts say that it is a rare, very rare part for such a storm to take. Mozambique is now bracing for a second landfall while still railing from the rains and floods brought by the cyclone. Moving on to sport, Flying Eagles head coach Ladan Bosso will have till April 10th to submit his provisional list of 50 players for the 2023 FIFA Under-20 World Cup. Bosso will name his final 21-man squad for the World Cup from the list. The Flying Eagles are among the four African teams that will feature at the Under-20 World Cup in Indonesia. Senegal, Gambia and Tunisia are the other countries. The draw for the competition will be held this month. The Flying Eagles have been runners-up twice at the World Cup in 1989 and 2005. To end the news, here is a recap of our major story. CBN orders bank to collect old 500 Naira notes and 1,000 Naira notes. INEC represents certificate of return to reps members elect. Aviation fuel hit 840 Naira per litre. Airlines predict flight delay. And as foreign scene, Zimbabwe caught blocks release of electronic voters role. And in sports, Flying Eagles coach to submit provisional list of under-20 World Cup. That's the news right here on Rapid TV. Do not forget to follow us on all our social media platforms. And of course, uh, like all our content, my name is Cynthia Agbot. Do have yourself a wonderful evening. And once again, happy International Women's Day.